Hi, my name is Cynthia Rudin and I'm excited to teach you about machine learning. And in machine learning, the goal is to teach computers to learn by example. So I want to think about building a computer vision system for a self-driving car. This is one of the most popular applications of machine learning currently. Okay, so let's say that we're trying to have our computer vision system be able to determine whether or not what it's seeing is a deer. Okay, because deers are unpredictable. We really would like to know whether or not there's a deer in, in, in what we're seeing, in the image that we're seeing. Okay, so let's say we create a labeled training set. We have a data set where we, hold, where we have a whole bunch of images, um, and some of them are deer and some of them are not deer, and each image is labeled as to whether or not uh, there's a deer in the image. Okay, so let's say that um, you know, we're going to continue our database. We, we really want to be able to determine that people are not deer. And then the question is, given a new image that we've never seen before, you know, what is this thing here? And the idea is that uh, if our database is, is complete enough, as, as long as there are enough data, both positive and negative examples of deer, uh, for each, you know, for this, not just for the task of detecting deer, but also for any other task you want to, you want to um, accomplish, then you hope that the computer can see the patterns in the data set well enough to distinguish deer from non-deer in a new, um, in, even though it hasn't seen that exact image of that exact uh, circumstance, um, then it should still be able to use patterns in the data set to figure out, okay, well, this looks like something I've seen before, and, and so therefore I can identify that, that there is a deer in this picture. Okay, so machine learning is pattern recognition. There's no real intelligence. It's not. It's artificial intelligence. It's not real intelligence. It's just. It's just recognizing patterns. Okay. So if it sees a deer walking across, it says, "Oh, I've seen. You know that that resembles a pattern I've seen before in my data set." Okay, and I, I should mention that the data can be imperfect. Like points can be misclassified. So as it turns out, like um, maybe maybe the labeler um, who labeled that. Deer, uh, maybe it thought it was a really obese cat. Okay, maybe uh, maybe he just got got confused on that label there. So that can happen. But um, in any case, the even if the points are misclassified, the computer vision system can still see enough of the patterns in the data that uh, it it should still be able to identify these patterns. And maybe it won't be perfect, and that that's okay. It'll just do as well as it can do. I mean, humans aren't even perfect if you think about it. All right, so I want you to get into the mode of thinking about images as vectors, right? So images, you can think about them as like triples of RGB values, red, green, blue values. So here's an image here. And I want you to think about um, each pixel in this image as a, um, a triple. Okay, this is supposed to be a pixel that I'm drawing. And this pixel is um, some red, green, blue values. So I'm just going to put down the values here. Okay. And so you can think about each pixel as a vector of size three, which means that you can think about an image as being comprised of just these, you know, these individual pixels, which are vectors of size three. So the whole image is a giant vector of represented by a vector of giant vector of numbers. Okay. And so an, an image can be considered as a vector, and so anything could be, and, and in fact, any, almost any object in this world can be represented as a vector, okay? So let's say here, so let's say images as vectors, and then let's say here, anything is vectors. Let me give you an example. So let's talk about uh, a patient, a medical patient, and we're trying to predict whether or not this patient is going to have a stroke next year. All right, so let's represent the patient as a vector. So the patient's, the, the first thing we'll represent, the first item that we want to represent about the patient is the blood pressure. Maybe the blood pressure is a good predictor of whether they'll have a stroke. Maybe their weight, whether they take blood thinners, and so on and so forth. And then the label might be whether or not the patient had a heart attack the following year. And so we want to build a predictor and 
of of the patient of of patients right who may be likely to have a stroke and then we label them as to whether or not they had a stroke the following year and then we can use those patterns to predict for new patients that come in whether or not they're likely to have a stroke okay the this information here these numbers that represent images or patients or whatever it is they have they're called features they're also called covariates they're also called explanatory variables they're called independent variables they're called predictor variables they're called lots of different things but they all are descriptors of um, the phenomenon we're trying to predict okay now let's say that we're working in just two dimensions all right now the thing is I can actually plot things in two dimensions. Right, I can plot 2D vectors. So let's say that I have these, a database of medical patients here and I'm trying to predict whether they're going to have a stroke. And then I have their labels. So this patient had a stroke, that one didn't. And I'm going to represent them just by two pieces of information, their blood pressure and their weight. Okay, so whatever that person's blood pressure and weight are. And then this is why that's what we want to predict, the outcome. And then the features are called X. And I can take this and I can actually plot this in two dimensions. So I'm gonna just grab my axis here. And then I'll plot blood pressure on this axis and weight on this axis. And let's say that when I plot all of these data, and here's my weight is 160. That guy is a plus, like this. Okay, so I can actually plot the whole, you can actually visualize the whole data set just like this, just like that. And then our goal is to try to provide a classifier for the data. So something that recognizes the patterns in the data and can classify new patients. So classifier, or classification, I should say, let's do classification, is where we wanna create a function f of x so that the sine of f equals the label y, okay, which is a function of x. So let's say the sine of f of x equals the label y of x. Okay, so let's, um, let's keep drawing here. Let's see. And I have my x1, x2, there's my data. And then let's say that I can construct a function f like this, where right on this line, um, f of x equals zero. This is the decision boundary. This is f of x greater than zero. That's predict positive, so predict the patient's going to have a stroke. And this is f of x less than zero. That means predict the patient won't have a stroke. And then um, it is possible, right, if, if we had a negative point over here, like let's say we had a patient with very high blood pressure and very high weight and they didn't have a stroke. Is that okay? Well, it's misclassified. It just means that our predictions are not perfect. And we shouldn't, in general, expect perfect prediction. Okay, so the training set that we use to train the model f of x is generally called S. So S is a collection of feature vectors and labels. And this is the typical notation. So X is a vector. And Y, in this case, is plus or minus one. Um, the labels can get much more interesting later. <laughs> but for now, we're just going to predict yes or no, uh, the answers to yes or no questions. And then, um, we, we will have a machine learning algorithm 
which uses the data set S to create a model, to create our model f of x. Okay, so what are some applications for this? Well, I've already, I've already um, talked about image processing. So for instance, self-driving cars, also things like, um, you know, um, handwriting recognition. So for instance, when you, when you write out an envelope, if you handwrite it and you send it to the post office, they'll actually have a machine learning model read that envelope and read the, letter, read the letters and numbers that you wrote and identify what they are, right? That's a classification task. Is this a, is, did this person write a, a letter A? Did this person write a letter B? Um, and so that's exactly the framework that I'm showing you here where um, it's the same, the same problem where we wanted to identify whether or not there was a deer um, in a picture. It's the same thing as recognizing hand, handwritten digits. And, and also when you write out a check and deposit it into an ATM machine, there's a bit of machine learning software in there that's reading the handwritten information on that check. Uh, there are also other, many other interesting topics, especially in healthcare, like I mentioned, predicting strokes, but predicting also any medical outcome. And there are also very controversial applications of machine learning, such as face recognition, which, as you can imagine, would be very similar to the task of identifying whether there's a deer in an image or not. There's also problems in speech recognition. When you dictate into dictation software, there's a machine learning method trying to figure out what, what words you are saying. You know, did the person say, hello, this is machine learning? <laughs> uh, also, credit, credit card companies often um, look for fraud using machine learning. Is this transaction fraudulent or not? Uh, as well, um, credit default risk. When you go and apply for a loan at a bank, they ask you, they, they ask you a bunch of questions to try to figure out whether you are uh, likely to default on a loan if they give you one. And also, um, there are many people trying to predict things like whether a child is in danger, right? Based on the based on the police record of the, their family members and other things like that. Now, I want to mention that there are many important algorithms for machine learning for solving the kinds of problems that I just mentioned. So, um, I've been talking about binary classification tasks. So I'll just talk about some of the algorithms for those tasks. Um, believe it or not, binary classification is like it's like the core problem of machine learning, and then everything else kind of branches out from there. If you can, if you can predict the answers to yes or no questions, then um, that gets you very, very far. Okay, so I'll write down here algorithms for machine learning. And I'll write down logistic regression, decision trees, boosting, support vector machines. See, these are all like powerful weapons. When I write these down, I think about each of them and how powerful they are. It's like my, my arsenal of weapons against all kinds of interesting prediction problems. Random forests, neural networks, and the perceptron. And there are other methods like k-nearest neighbors, many, many machine learning methods. And in this class, we actually cover all of these methods. Um, that's nice about doing an overview class that you can cover kind of a very broad range of machine learning um, algorithms. And I should mention that there are many other machine learning problems too. So, so far, like I mentioned, I just talked about predicting the answers to yes or no questions, but there are other problems. So other machine learning problems. And in particular, regression. And in regression, instead of predicting the answers to you know, yes or no, like is it a deer or not, in regression you pick, predict real values. Like how much rain is there gonna be next week? <laughs> That's a, a real number, not a yes or a no. Also density estimation. Density estimation is like, how common is what I'm seeing now? Like, how unusual is this? So for instance, you can use density estimation to figure out how common the modus operandi is of a, of a particular criminal. Okay, clustering. Clustering is like, um, how, can I, how can I put these data into groups that sort of behave similarly and that are well separated from each other? 
ranking. How can I rank my airplanes so that um, the most the airplane that's the most likely to fail is at the top of the list so I can repair that airplane first? And um, yeah, so there's many there's even many other problems beyond these, but classification is the big one. Yes or no predictions. And so I will spend a good chunk of my time talking about that. And I really hope you enjoy the course.